Today I will be building this room to go along with games such as Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder. Jeremiah here. I'm back with another terrain build. Um, I promised I'd be making a video of the commencement of my dungeon build and I'm doing a whole two foot by three foot dungeon. I have it all planned out. Um, this is going to be the first room. So far, so good. Let's see. Yeah, characters will enter here. And they'll come in. Still working on it. But I'm going to show you the basic parts of the room today. And then next time, hopefully next... I don't know, maybe I'll go for Fridays. I'm trying to decide what day's best for me to post. Um... I'm hoping to post at least every two weeks, but right now we're going for next Friday. Uh, hopefully I get this out on Monday. If not Monday, it's going to be Tuesday night. Uh, right now I'm recording and it's Sunday, but I have all the footage for this build recorded. So and it's pretty cool. If you look close, you're going to see that I even have little fish in the water. So yeah, this is exciting. This is a great start to this build. Um, I'm excited to show you guys how I went about it. So let's get into that build. Also, if you're anything like I am, I just can't get enough terrain building in miniature painting and D&D on YouTube, even though there's a ton of it out there, it seems. So that's the reason I started this channel and I hope to give a little bit more to the community. So anyway, let's get started with this video. Excited to show you, you'll enjoy it I'm sure. Thank you. I was actually rather intimidated by building a whole dungeon. So one day I just decided to hurry and just jump into it. I measured out the shape and grid first and cut out all the basics. Because I decided to have a dungeon with varied ground height, I struggled at first with how I was going to build the walls. After some thinking about it and fiddling around with too much measuring, I just took a second layer of the same size as my first layer and measured out a wall on that. Then, after I had the walls traced out, I added my ledge pieces to the tracing. Next, I took my jerry-rigged hot foam cutter and cut out the shapes that I wanted. I found this solution to my problem to be most effective, and I will definitely be using it when I build the other rooms in my dungeon. A note on the foam cutter, since I have recorded this, I have invested in a Proxon hot wire table, and I am loving it. Next, I add the grid to the ledge areas of the room, pretty straightforward. I also make sure that the wall pieces are fitting how I want them. I'm happy with how it turned out. So I take my new hot glue gun and start gluing the pieces together. I hold each piece together and make sure they do not come apart. The walls will have a bit of a gap, but I'm happy with the way it looks, so they're staying that way. After I get all the pieces firmly in place, I chip the edges of all the ledges of the second ground layer. This will add a slight touch of realism. You can just use your fingernail for this, but this time I'm using a sculpting tool. Next, I lay out where I want to add the pools of water, then pour some 100% acetone nail polish remover into the lid and start applying it to the surfaces of the foam where I want the pools. It does an excellent job of melting the foam. This is a fun process, but it is dangerous to breathe in, so make sure you wear a respirator or have appropriate ventilation if you are doing this. I use my sculpting tool to scrape some of the ugly pieces of foam out of the melted pools. It takes a minute, but the final result looks great. Now I heat up my Walnut Hollow VersaTool, link in description, and I start cutting out stairs that are in the same style as the walls and ledges of this room. I also use a hobby knife to get a flat look that will match the rest of the floor. Also, I don't forget to chip the ledges here either so it matches the rest of the room. Now I use my Versa tool to engrave the tiled look I am going for. I do somewhat wavy lines to represent a more uneven floor. 
Despite this not being very realistic, I do enjoy the look. It gives the area. Now, the grid is carved and looking great, but I wanted to add a little rough terrain to the build. So I take out some jagged rocks and glue them around the whole room, including the pools. Unfortunately, the dummy I am, I forgot to hit record, so I don't have the footage. But anyway, after gluing all the rocks in place, I texture the floor with a piece of asphalt. I found it difficult to get into some of the corners, so I also rolled a small rock around for texture and some of the hard places to get. This room is starting to look just how I imagined. I love it when that happens. That's sometimes a rare thing, but when it happens, it's great. Now that I'm happy with my result, I go on to paint a layer of black over the whole piece. This black is a mixture of black paint, strong PVA glue, as well as a little bit of varnish and water. I don't have certain measurements, I just add it until it looks the consistency I want. Um, I take my time and make sure the paint is in every crease and crevice. This will not only be a strong undercoating, it will also help hold all the details together. After I get it completely covered, I dab the brush over the entire thing once again so it does not look like I have a bunch of brush marks. It looks really excellent after it dries. In the next step, I apply a couple different shades of gray to the dungeon. One is a warmer French gray, and the other is a medium cooler gray. This will give some variation and realism to the stone. I wanted to add just a little more variation to the stone, so I opted for beige color as well and just dabbed it randomly on. I did make sure not to go overboard with this step though, as I wanted the room to have a more gray overtone. Now for the pools. I want the pools to have that bluish mineral appearance that you see a lot of caves have, or you imagine a lot of caves have, at least I imagine a lot of caves have. So anyway, so I use a smaller brush to paint them with a light blue. Some of the large rocks that I think will stick out, as with the rest of the piece, I want the pools to be somewhat variegated. So I add teal to random places in the pools. Just dab it on randomly as I did with the rest of the build, but just in the pools. The pools are already looking amazing because of the colors I'm using. I don't always do a black wash anymore, but I wanted to dull down the stone and add some more shadows to the piece. So when I put it on, I am carefully avoiding the pools as I want to, as I want them to be as vibrant as they are. There are lots of different great recipes for making your own wash, but I do enjoy the recipe I use. That consists of black India ink, lots of water, a drop of dish soap, and a squirt of varnish. And I don't know the exact amounts. Once again, I just do it until it looks right. Um, usually do a decent job. After the black wash dries, it is time to add some highlighting. With the stone, I use a cream color and I add light dry brushing to all the edges. I make sure to avoid the pools again, as I do not want this warm cream color to interfere with the vibrancy of the blue. Now, I take a small brush and I do a light handed dry brush with a bright white in both the pools. I'm very careful not to add more than necessary as I do not want the blue color to get a chalky and toned down look to it. The sloppy gray brush strokes were bothering me, so I took a small paint roller and applied it to all the areas that I wanted to be flat black. This really gave the room a clean look and stand out. So far this build is looking amazing. I'm very impressed with how it's turning out. Proud of myself. So anyway, all right, that's all today. Um, I'll be finishing, well not finishing this build, but the next part of this build will be finishing the basics to this room. Next part I'll be focusing on the little pools of water. Show you how I went about that. Hopefully you can gain some inspiration for that. I got an awesome process and some of you have probably seen a sneak peek in my Instagram and my Twitter. Um, so you might want to take a look down below in the description and subscribe to my channel. Yeah.
well, take a look below in the description. Let me rephrase that. And find me on Instagram and Twitter. And subscribe to my channel, of course, the usual. Support me on Patreon if you can. Um, I got a couple links down there that I find useful. Uh, stuff I use. And anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next week.